Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do. It's going to be a chatty get ready with me getting this look right here. I'm using a couple of new products that I'm pretty excited about. I have the Carly Bible and Anastasia palette, which I'm using for the first time today. I also have a couple of products from Ofra from their holiday collection that I am going to be using and a few new products from my recent Sephora and Ulta haul that I'm going to be using in here as well. And for today's topic, uh, I recently celebrated 10 years being on social media. Wednesday, October 16th was my 10 year anniversary of publishing my first post on my blog, Chiclet Plus, and that's kind of what started everything. My blogging career, my publishing career, my social media career, YouTube career, all of that. Uh, and so I got a lot of requests to do a video kind of focused on that. And so I thought it would be fun to take your questions about starting a blog, being an entrepreneur, how have times changed from 10 years ago till now, um, and just all of those different uh, items. So I asked on my Instagram stories for your questions and I try to answer as many as I can today and just kind of reflect back on the 10 years uh, that I've been in social media. I do have a giveaway up on my blog, which is chickletplus.com. I will go ahead and link it in my description box, but I do have a, a giveaway going on now to celebrate 10 years. There's a bunch of beauty items in there and also the winner will be receiving a signed copy of my latest novel, which is The Six Scarlet. So if you wanna enter, I will have that link in my description box. But if you would like to see how I got this look and uh, while I answer some of your questions about my past 10 years, while we go ahead and get started. Hello, welcome. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm gonna start with my face just because I have a lot of breakouts going on right now and I feel like it's just gonna make me feel a little bit better being on camera and everything. Just doing some covering up here. I'm not really sure if it is some new products that I've been trying. I've been trying out the ColourPop Pretty Fresh collection. I don't know if that's what's causing the breakouts. I did some traveling, I was in New York. Um, I'm not really sure. What's going on? I eat a lot of chocolate chip muffins these days. I'm not, really, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I am just going to go ahead and get started with my face using the primer from Ofra Cosmetics that's in my Shop My Stash bag. Kind of have a variety between like Shop My Stash and some new products and all of that. If I don't mention anything, I will always link out everything that I'm using, including brushes, in my description box so you can always check that if I don't say the name of something and you're curious about it. But uh, like I said in the intro, I'm just gonna be answering some of your questions about my decade in social media. Um, I've been kind of trying to look at the questions here and again to see kind of what you guys are asking. And it looks like it's a kind of a variety between blogging and books and YouTube and all of that. So I'm excited. That's, you know, that's what I want it because, um, you know, I don't define myself as one thing. I'm not just an author. I'm not just a YouTuber. I'm not just this or that. Like I do a lot of different things. And so I was excited to see kind of a variety of questions here. Uh, so let's see. One question is, how did you know when it was time to go full time? That's a good question. Before I left to go full time, I was actually working uh, at a veterans hospital. I'd worked there for, I think it was eight years total um, and loved the job. I thought it was great. It was a very, well, it wasn't very secure. <laughs> Let me say that it was with the government. We went on freezes and all of that. We didn't, you, the, there was a lot going on, of course. Um, but for the most part, I had a pretty secure paycheck. I had good benefits. I had great health insurance, a lot of time off, all that good stuff. But I always knew that I wanted to be my own boss. Uh, I'm just going to use the Shiseido foundation and I'm going to use my LC Cosmetics sponge. I hauled this one recently in my Sephora and Alta haul, And I was like, oh, look, it looks like, like it reminds me of Maleficent. And so many of you guys said it reminded you of something else something adult. I never thought of that. And now that's all I can think of when I look at this sponge. So thank you to everyone who brewed this for me. No, I'm just kidding, of course. But I was like, is Maleficent Disney? So I was like, look, this reminds me of Disney. And so many of you guys were like, uh-uh-uh, Samantha. That is not what it reminds us of. I knew that I always wanted to be my own boss. I knew that I always wanted to work for myself and I really wanted to follow my passions. But as someone who, you know, has struggled with money most of her life, I don't come from a wealthy background or things like that. Um, I knew that I had to be 
smart and I knew that I had to, you know, save up money and also be established before I left my full-time job. Now, I did post a video recently. I started a new series called Mindset and Makeup and I posted the first video and I kind of go a little bit more in depth about um, my background and financials and things like that and also when I decided to go full-time and kind of what I was thinking there. So I will link that one down below, but basically what it came down to was I wanted to be established in the field that I was in, which I left my full-time job to publish books. I had not even started a YouTube channel at the time that I left my job, so I do want to say that. Um, so I wanted to be very established, and I think I had, I had four books published by the time I left my full-time job. I also did own a publishing company and I had been publishing books for other authors as well. So as my own publisher, I own an LLC uh, and all of that. So I wanted to be established there. And also at the time that I left my full-time job, I was working in marketing for another book publishing company. So I was already doing a lot in addition to a full-time job. I was, you know, staying up till 2, 3 a.m. some nights, waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning just to try to get everything done. On my lunch breaks at the hospital, I was, you know, writing, editing, blogging, bringing my own computer from home so I could, you know, get work done that way. Uh, so... My biggest thing was that, like I said, I wanted to be established and I felt that when I left my job. I also wanted to have a good um, savings account built up, which I did do as like my case of emergency. Also, uh, I got married and I was able to get on my husband's health insurance. That was one of the biggest things to me. It's definitely not why I got married, of course. I'd been with Mitch, I think, for seven years before we got married. But health insurance is a huge thing to me uh, and if to get health insurance as a self-employed individual is incredibly expensive and it's usually pretty crummy health insurance. So I waited until I was married, I was able to get on Mitch's health insurance plan which was a really good one uh, and then I felt that was kind of like the final piece. Then I felt secure, I felt established, I had backup plans, health insurance. I felt confident in leaving my full-time job. This concealer from Milani, I also have this in my Sephora and Ulta haul, the Conceal and Perfect Long Wear Concealer. Uh, I do also, I just started a podcast recently. Uh, as I'm filming this on Thursday, the second episode just went live, but it is the next episode that's going to come out next Thursday. I launch a new episode every Thursday morning. So the next one that goes up, I actually talk about a little bit more in depth on this subject and when you really want to do something like I'm someone who really recommends like if you want something go for it jump in do it get it going but at the same time let me contradict myself because you do need a plan you need a strategy you need a plan you need a backup plan you need all of these different things so I'm really excited for that episode to go live next Thursday uh, my podcast is called Start Inspired and it's available on Spotify and iTunes and Google Play and all of that. So if you search Start Inspired, or no, I'm sorry, if you search my name, Samantha March, it comes up a little bit quicker than it does if you search uh, Start Inspired. But that's what next week's episode is going to be. And I hope that I can offer some some good advice in there, kind of about just that that question in general is when is it the right time to go full time because if you just jump in and try something if you do not have a secure background if you don't have um you know parents or a spouse or a partner or someone that can kind of help handle the bills while you just like shoot for your dreams um you can very quickly get yourself into a lot of trouble so not sure how i feel about the sponge off the bat it just doesn't like feel like it's very large, which can be good and bad. Um, it's very large, but it also, I just, I don't feel like I love the way it feels. Like it's not the softest, it's not super hard, but it's not like, like I feel like I don't like the material of it. I don't know. And this is very sharp. Like that'll poke you in the eye if you're not careful. So concealer I do like though. I feel like that really covered a lot. Like I needed some full coverage concealing up in my life today. So and it blended out really easily too. Hmm. Okay, this is a really good question. How have you dealt with people in your life who don't see social media as a real job? Uh, I think that's definitely a struggle still today, especially 10 years ago when I was first starting out. 
n not a lot of people knew what blogging even was or they didn't understand it or just didn't get it and a lot of times I would be embarrassed to be like oh yeah like I also blog on the side like I work at a hospital um, but I also blog on the side and I'm an author like all these different things people would be like okay <laughs> sure <laughs> like whatever uh, and it definitely didn't get a lot of love back in 2009 2010 I mean a lot of people just didn't understand it definitely over the years um, I feel like it's gotten more prevalent people understand it people know what it is um, and all of that so which is good but I think a hard part for me and what I try to remember when I feel like I'm being judged or people don't seem to understand my job is that a lot of times people will go on Instagram or Twitter or YouTube or whatever it may be for fun. That's their downtime. You know, they've worked all day at whatever job it is that they're working. Maybe they can't be on their phones a lot. Maybe they're not on a computer, um, you know, things like that. So when they get home from work, it's like, it's their time. They get to relax, they get to catch up on the news, you know, what happened in sports that day, um, you know, what celebrities are doing what, or, you know, just whatever it may be. There's like powder flying everywhere. Whatever it may be, that's kind of like their time to do it. And so when people see me being on like Twitter or Instagram, they, a lot of times I just think there's not an understanding of this is my job. This is what I do for work because that's what people do for fun. That's what they do when they're not at work. Do you know what I mean? So I think sometimes there can be just like a disconnect there because, you know, I've gotten messages or like I've gotten over the years, like talking to friends and people being like, oh, well, you didn't respond to my text message, but I saw that you posted on Instagram. And it's like, well, yeah, because I was working. That's my that's my job. That's what I do. Like maybe I had a post, you know, required to go up at that time by a brand. That's my job. That's where a paycheck is coming from. Um, you know, things like that. So uh, I think it's just a thing of people you know trying to understand that we're different that over the years and with the internet being introduced and social media being introduced there's been a lot of new jobs careers just opportunities that have been open for everybody um and i think some people just still don't get that or maybe don't want to get that or whatever it may be and it can lead to problems with you know communication and, and stuff like that but I think that part is is hard for me. Or sometimes it's like it's not taken seriously because it's, oh, your job is just like posting on Instagram. Like, well, my job's so much harder. Like, you know, I get that a lot or I get people saying, you know, oh, I wish I could be like you and just sit at home and film videos for YouTube. And it's like, you guys, you might not understand what all goes into it. Not everything, like not even just everything you have to learn. I didn't know anything about cameras or editing or lighting or how to even actually post a video on YouTube. There's so much learning that had to go with it. It didn't come naturally to me, which was actually the topic of today's podcast that went up. None of this has come naturally to me. Even learning how to actually physically publish a book I didn't know how to do that. I could write the book, sure, but how do you take what you've written and put it into an actual print copy and then distribute it? I had no idea. There's so much learning that goes in with this. And it's not like if you go to, like I'm gonna use my job at the hospital for an example. It's not like when I would go into the hospital and they would give me two weeks of training, hands-on training from someone who's been there, from someone whose job is the trainer. You don't get that, you just have to jump in and try to figure it out yourself and ask questions and Google around and see what works best for you. So there's actually so much that goes into this. And then of course, there's just being on social media in general, dealing with the comments, um, dealing with not having time off. You know, I got sick leave and annual leave at the job at the hospital. Um, you know, it was very flexible and I was still getting paid even when I wasn't working. That's not really the case with YouTube. And if I don't feel good and I can't film, I can't have my backup who would answer my phones for me when I was gone at the hospital. My backup can't film for me. My backup can't be on camera for me, <laughs> right? Like, so there's just so much that goes into it and, um, you know, I wish that there was more respect for this job because it's really hard. It's a lot of hours. It's a lot of time, energy, and money that you put in up front that you might not get reimbursed in the same way you would in your traditional job. Um, 
So yeah, those are definitely things that can be hard. How do I manage reading and answering so many comments and messages? <laughs> well, thank you for that question. I do appreciate that. Definitely a lot of social media and just what I do in general involves really good time management. Um, I make a to-do list for myself every day with things that have to be done and all of that. Um, but, and I think a big thing about what I do, especially because it's all for myself is you have to have really great self motivation. That's a skill or a trait that I feel like I've had for a very long time. I've generally pretty much always been very self motivated. I was able to do online college, which you have to be very self motivated to do something like that. You're not going into a classroom every single day at a certain time. It's up to you to log in and to get your assignments done and to interact and all of that. So there's definitely a lot of self motivation that goes in with this job. Um, but the biggest thing is really time management. You know, I do work from home and I work for myself, but I have you know, set hours. I wake up early. I, you know, have my computer turned on by a certain time every single day and all of that. And I don't spend my time during the day, you know, watching TV or just hanging out on the couch or, you know, things like that. I, again, I have my to-do list. I have what needs to get done that day and I go, 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 go. I mean, there's times where I work through lunch that, I, you know, I, I just bring in a sandwich with me and I'm eating at my computer. There's times that I work into the night and it really just comes down to time management. And I try to build um, at least three different sections throughout my day to spend a half hour on responding to comments, messages, emails, Twitter DMs, Instagram DMs, and all of that. It's a lot. It's not easy. But I think the interaction between myself and those who watch me and support me is really important. So even though sometimes I can only heart something on Twitter or heart a YouTube comment, I still want it to be shown that I'm reading your comment and I appreciate it. But I also try to comment back as, as much as I can. But truly, I mean, to respond to every single message that I'm getting in would require a few more hours out of my day. But I do try to do my best. So thank you for asking that. Okay, I did do my brows off camera just using the pre the Precisely My Brow from Benefits. I don't have a new brow product today. Uh, another question is, how did I learn to edit and film? Um, basically, just trial and error. Again, it kind of goes back to there's no training guide. There's no training materials. It's just up to you to look and to also try it. And if it doesn't work, try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else. Ask questions. Uh, filming and editing, editing especially, is still not easy for me to do. I can't wait for the day where I can hire someone who can help me with editing because I know it's not my strong suit and I know how much time it takes me to even edit just a basic video. I'm not great at it. So that's like a goal <laughs> one day, maybe one day. I use some new products from Ofer Cosmetics and their holiday uh, collection. They gave this to me when I was at the Ipsy Live event. Their booth looked so, so good. I do have a vlog up of my event too. And it was so nice. Ofra was there. Um, Kareen was there. So I got to, to see some people again uh, that I got to see during my trip to Florida. So that was really very nice. So I'll link my vlog and my Florida vlog if you want to check that out of my time getting to visit Ofra Cosmetics. But this is one of their holiday products. This is the Hot Cocoa Duo. So you have a bronzer on one side and then this is the Rodeo Drive Highlight. So the bronzer is more of a shimmery bronzer, which I do like. And then Rodeo Drive um, is just a, a, a beautiful highlight, uh, one of their classics. So I am just going to go ahead and use this bronzer here. Uh, another question that I got was, do you prefer blogging 10 years ago versus blogging today? Oh, that is a very, ooh, that is a very pigmented bronzer. Oh, I like that it's shimmery though. Mm, that looks pretty. Okay. Uh, when it comes to blogging, so 10 years ago, blogging was such a big thing. And I mean blogging as having a blog where you write articles and you have posts and people come to it. I feel like around 2012, 2013 especially, I started to see the traffic on my blog really drop off. It didn't seem like blogs were kind of like the big thing anymore. 
um, a lot of people were switching to videos to get their information. YouTube was becoming a big thing. Like YouTube was already around, but it was becoming bigger and bigger. More people were getting on YouTube and creating videos. And uh, so that's, you know, that's a big reason too why I switched to like adding in my YouTube channel as well because I was making you know, uh, a part-time income with my blog through like my Amazon affiliate links um, and, you know, having banners for companies on the sides of your blogs, like you would get paid to have those banners there. And I noticed, you know, traffic falling off my Amazon affiliates, you know, uh, commission taking a huge hit. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? So that was why I started to expand. I mean, as we, as the world changes and evolves and grows, you have to do it along with the world. Otherwise you're going to get left behind. If I was still only blogging like I was 10 years ago, it's just not possible for me to do that anymore because while one time people were really searching out blogs and it was a huge thing, that's just not happening as much anymore. So you have to find where is your audience and you have to be there with them, if that makes sense. So uh, like for example, I used to run a blog tour company is what it was called. I was one of the first, if not the first, that created this for indie authors. Uh, it was starting to become a little bit of a thing for more traditional authors. You know when traditional authors go on a book tour, they have a bunch of different cities, they typically go to a bookstore, they have a book signing, people can come and meet them, take photos, buy their books, get them signed and all of that. Well, because blogging was becoming such a big thing, um, you know, the publishing companies were also having their authors be featured on book blogs. And I thought, okay, that's a great idea, but I'm an indie author. I work with a lot of indie authors for editing and proofreading and marketing. Why don't I start my own company and put together blog tours for authors? And it was hugely successful. It was another big reason of why I could quit my job because that company, CLP Blog Tours, was insanely successful. Um, it was actually more successful than me publishing books to be honest with you, was doing this marketing. And I did that for maybe like four or five years. I worked with thousands of authors, um, thousands of bloggers, and it was just each day during the scheduled blog tour, the blogger would post a review, a spotlight, an author interview. We would just somehow be driving traffic to this author and to their book, whether it be a new release, whether it be a book sale, whether they just wanted to drive a little bit of attention to their books, we would put, I, I would put that together with them with the bloggers. Very, very successful. Very happy that I did that. But once blogs started becoming not as much of a big thing, guess what took a hit? CLP blog tours. Because uh, I think a lot of bloggers also started to realize that blogging wasn't as big of a thing as it was before. Other bloggers were coming onto YouTube or BookTube and all of that. And it was getting harder and harder for me to find bloggers to sign up for the blog tours. And it was also getting harder and harder for me to find bloggers that were posting on the date that they said that they were going to post. People were all of a sudden late, kind of ghosting my emails, not responding to them. And even though I was the one putting everything together and I was the middleman of everything, I relied on the bloggers to make my company successful. I needed them. It's why I ran giveaways every single month for bloggers that participated because I wanted to say thank you to them. I knew I couldn't do it without them. So when blogging was changing, I could no longer run my company because I couldn't find bloggers or I couldn't find bloggers that you know, were going to be consistent with their work. So I had to shut down CLP blog tours and that was a really, really hard time because that was a huge hit on my income. But it also was, I put so much time and energy into that company and building it and being successful and having the testimonies and working with bloggers that when I stopped, I was like, what am I gonna do now? I have all of this time. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Another reason why I came over to YouTube. Uh, I'm also gonna use this duo here from Ofra, this is the Snuggle Up Blush and Highlighter Duo. So you have the blush and Bellini on one side and then Star Island, which is one of my favorite highlighters. So I'm going to go ahead and use this blush. I didn't know with being the split pants, I wasn't sure how easy the brushes were going to be to get into it. And I chose my 
eco tool brushes because they're a little bit bigger but actually i'm really not having a problem um even with the bronzer i wasn't having a problem with that so i don't think you can use like your big big daddy brushes but i don't think you need smaller brushes to fit into the duos also so did want to point that out because i was curious that's why I, I wanted to try these to see what i thought too so in regards to blogging you know those are just a, a few thoughts there and how i've really seen the industry change and how i've been impacted by the industry changing myself as well uh so blogging i think was more successful 10 years ago but i think it also was kind of a catalyst of where we are today i mean like i said the world is going to continue to grow and evolve and that was a great place to get started that was a great place to get my foot in the door and really learn and start to make connections in you know all of the different industries that i was um, it was great to, you know, work on my writing and write these blog posts every day, learn how to interview people, learn how to interact as a businesswoman with people. I, I learned so much from blogging and I'm so appreciative of that. I, I always say starting CLP was one of my best ideas that I've ever had and I'm so glad that I did it. Uh, but it's just really changed throughout the 10 years. And um, I'm definitely, like there's been times where I thought of closing down my blog just in general because I can see that you know the traffic isn't there and it's you know it's not as much but the thing is and I've spoke about this in another video I own my blog I own the domain name I own the hosting for it I own every single thing on that blog and no one can take that blog away from me YouTube can go away tomorrow YouTube can take away my subscribers YouTube can hide my videos so people can't see them but my blog is mine so I'm always going to keep, not, I, I hate to say always, but I don't foresee myself getting rid of my blog. It's definitely been very interesting as someone who's been in this industry for 10 years and seeing how it's changed and, you know, seeing how it's personally affected me as well. To leave my highlight for last, I'm just going to spray my face with a bit of Fix Plus and then move on to the eyes. Okay, for the eyes, I'm really excited to use the Carly Bible and Anastasia palette. My sweet friend and Katie sent this over to me. Um, I will link her channel down below. She took a bit of a break from YouTube, but she is back. So I will link her. And she sent this over. I, I gifted her my collab with Oprah, which, you know, that was it. And she said thank you. And, got, and I was like, that was not necessary at all that was so nice of her to do because i was planning to buy this i almost bought this in new york uh because uh it became available in stores and i was like i should just sneak into a sephora and buy it and i just didn't get any time and then i came home and on my way back i checked my p.o box and this was in there from her so how awesome is this i'm so excited about this i, I love carly bible um so i was really excited to see this palette this is my first time opening it i've been so busy i haven't even opened it yet but I am really excited to give this one a shot and try to think of what eye look I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm just going to take a little bit of Bare and I'm just going to use um, the brush that came in the palette and I'm just going to run this all over my eyelid to set my concealer that I used. There's so many beautiful shades in here but the one that's like really calling to me right now is Aura. I'm just going to go ahead and do... That one is really, really pretty. There's some really cool, like, blue grays in here, too. Like, uh, I think this is Jody after her mom. Ooh. Or is it Jode? I can't remember how she said it. My mom's name is Jody, too. I don't usually call her Jode, but I just call her Jody. <laughs> or mom. More often, call her mom. Or Libra. Libra is also very pretty. Ooh, I like Libra a lot. <gasps> I can't decide what I want to do. Okay, I'm just going to start trying something and see how it goes. So first I'm going to pick up Bible, the second shade here. I'm just going to use the Anastasia brush again. And I'm going to put that into my crease. I just don't love Anastasia brushes. I brought some other ones, but I thought I would give it a try. It comes with the palette and all of that, but just not my favorite okay, and then i'm gonna pick up a little bit of libra i'm just gonna try something i don't know how this is gonna work i'm just gonna use the other side of the brush it is dry right now i'm gonna run this all over the lid i just loved how this was a little bit more cool tone i thought it was really beautiful and then i'm gonna add a bit of a topper over it 
but I'm really just gonna run this all over the lid and I knew I was gonna get some fallout because that's kind of what happens with Anastasia palettes but I'm just gonna try to brush that away as best as I can so I'm really just gonna pack that all over the lid and then blend it a little bit this is such a quick and easy eye look you could just leave it here and it was so fast and simple and I love this Libra shade so much but I'm gonna try to do a little something to top it also I want to pick up a little bit of aura with a crease brush I'm gonna add just a little bit to a brush this is from the moda metallics line I'm gonna spray it since this one is more of like a almost like a little bit more on the glittery side versus Libra was and I'm just gonna kind of tap in the center just right over that Libra kind of like a halo eye but I just wanted to do I, I just I couldn't decide between these two shades so I thought like why not try to use them both and just add a little extra pizzazz to the eye look but again I love this on its own I think that's really pretty I'm just gonna kind of tap and pat around to kind of help blend it into the Libra shade so it's not too much but it just gives like a little a little added something added some of my pure rain eyeliner to my waterline it's in my shop my stash bag and then for the lower lash line I think I'm just gonna do a little bit of Bible and chai mix those together on a pencil brush mostly Bible to get that mauve tone I started to add mascara and then I was like hello you haven't done your lower lash line hello you can do really simple looks with the shades in here or you can like make it a little bit extra too i've seen some really pretty eye looks i've tagged a few of them that i want to try to recreate for myself um i'm not the best at doing makeup on the camera you know i'm not like a makeup artist or anything but a lot of times if i'm trying to create something i'm like really quiet focused right up in the mirror intense can't be talking about anything a lot of times I don't even watch anything unless I'm watching the tutorial but if I'm trying to copy a look like off my phone I don't have like a YouTube video playing like I'm just like focused like trying to get it because I don't have the most visual mind so it can be kind of hard for me so I need like full <laughs> full concentration actually for the highlight I'm going to come back into this one here and use Star Island as my inner corner highlight I love Star Island as the inner corner highlight. I use it out of my March Beauty Award highlighter a ton. Okay, and then I'm going to add my mascara. I have a mini of the NARS Climax that came in one of the holiday sets that NARS sent over. And I'm so excited to have this back because I used mine up recently. Uh, but another question was, when was the moment that you decided to pursue your entrepreneur career? So, I've... Like I said, I've always known that I've wanted to be my own boss. I have my degree in business. I went to a business college. But what really got me to start my blog, which is kind of what kicked everything off to where I am today, is after reading the book Something Borrowed by Emily Giffen. I actually did a video a while back. It's a chatty get ready with me talking about five life-changing books. It's a collab with my friend Michelle Wong here. I will link it down below because I talk more in depth about why reading that book uh, finally motivated me to start my blog because it had been something I'd been thinking about for a long time but it was that particular book that like pushed me over the edge so I was like I have to do this this is a good question it's, how do you keep your blog relevant with so many people using YouTube Instagram etc daily and you know it's kind of what I touched on before that blogs really aren't as you know relevant if you want to say that they were you know several years ago um, but again like I said I want to keep it because I own it so it's, it's hard because I know that I focus most of my energies on these social platforms because that's where, you know, everybody is. But there's times where I try to share, like in my YouTube videos, I try to share when I've given a five-star book review. You know, in my Makeup Monthly, I talk about the books that I've been reading. I try to link them on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you know, I have a giveaway running now over on my blog for the 10 years, and I, I put the giveaway there to drive people to it and all of that so it's a really using those platforms to share my posts I think it can help also because I can definitely see on my an in my analytics the days that I share posts to Chiclet Plus on YouTube or Instagram or Twitter 
that I have a spike in traffic versus the days that I don't. I experienced being looked at in a bad way because I was so into beauty. Yeah, definitely, especially with when I was starting out and really trying to make it in the book world and publishing a novel and all of that. My, when I first started Chiclet Plus, it was definitely more women's lifestyle. Right now it's more book blog, but I would write about everything, celebrities, beauty, fashion, um, just everything would go on my blog. And when I was making more connections in the book industry and I had my first book like ready to go into editing and let's get this published, I was getting a lot of feedback from other authors, like very well established authors, telling me if I really wanted to give it a go in books, I had to stop talking about the other stuff. I had to just go with books. And I think that that's a, that's a suggestion I hear a lot is to really niche down, find that one thing that you want to talk about and only focus on that. And I disagree with that. I have a lot more passions than just books, than just beauty, than just this. Just like I'm passionate about a lot of things. I'm interested in a lot of things and I think I should be able to talk about them. So many people are multifaceted these days. Uh, we have so many different talents. We are knowledgeable in so many different areas. So to say that you can only pick one thing to talk about, I think that's crazy. But I took that advice when I was young and I was hearing from really well-known authors that, you know, this is what I have to do to be successful. I wish that I hadn't done that because I feel like it really delayed it delayed me all around instead of just continuing to focus on everything that I wanted to do. I really niched down into just books and kind of hid different parts of me for a while. And it made it kind of harder to come back and get back into the groove of talking about other things because I gotten so used to only being known as an author, only being known as a blogger that I was like, how can I foray into beauty now? How can I talk about fashion? How can I do this? So you know, I know it's still a big advice to niche down, niche down, niche down, but I don't know. I don't agree with that, man, to be honest with you. You got a chance, Chiclet plus blank genre mashup book series. Okay, so if I got a chance, Chiclet plus what genre would I want to do in a mashup book series? Ooh, that's what, that was easy for me. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of Star Island as my highlight also. Uh, I love magical realism. So if you guys are not familiar with the term magical realism, uh, it's basically a book that will have magical or supernatural elements to it, but it'll be in a realistic way. I kind of think of the show Charmed. If anybody watched the TV show Charmed, I love it with Prue and Phoebe and uh, Piper and then uh, Paige came along. I love that, but it was like real women with real jobs and real relationships and doing real things. Ooh, they just happen to be witches at the same time and they have powers but it wasn't just like it wasn't set in a different time it wasn't set in a different land it was now and here and the present and real people they just also happen to have a, a, a magical realism effect to them as well I have always wanted to write a book like that a series would be super fun too. Question is, how do you feel about how blogs slash vlogs were frowned upon, but not so much now? Yeah, definitely. I think they just didn't get enough credit. People didn't understand them and people maybe didn't want to take the time to understand them. Uh, I think there's still definitely pushback when it comes to having a career in social media or, you know, people kind of roll their eyes like everyone's a social media influencer these days. Um, but I think that it's getting more respected when people see what it is that we can do and all of the good that can come from uh, having a platform and how much it can really touch other people and make a difference to them. Also inspire other people that they can do whatever it is they want to do. So Oprah also released some lip sets. Uh, with their holiday collection. So I'm going to go ahead and pop into the Fireside Hotties. This one has four new shades to Ofra, Aspen, Sedona, Palo Alto, and Portland. I'm going to use Aspen, which is described as a cool mauve pink nude, because I feel like that maybe would be the best one to go with this look. So that's pretty. Mm. I'm going to do a full lip swatch video on my Instagram of all four of these shades. So I don't know. It probably won't be up by tomorrow because I haven't even filmed it yet. But it'll be coming soon if you want to see all the different swatches here. I do like this shade. Mm, it's a little bit of a deeper mauve. 
Mm, that's pretty. Okay, so that is the shade Aspen from Ofra in their mini holiday set. This is a good question is how did I start blogging and what blogging platform did I start with? So yeah, definitely when it comes to uh, something like blogging and even podcasting that I'm learning, you do need to have a a space where you put your blog where it's hosted so my blog is on wordpress i definitely recommend it i feel like it was kind of um, very user friendly i looked around at a few different other places but i felt like wordpress was very user friendly that's where i'm going to end it because i feel like we probably got really long here so of course that that is me but if you have any other questions feel free to leave them down below if you'd want to see a part two just let me know i could definitely do that i love talking about my experiences though i love sharing my stories my journeys um it's so fun for me to talk about and just reflect back on think where these 10 years have taken me and everything that I've learned and the positives and the negatives that come with it. And so this was really fun. Thank you to everyone who suggested doing this video. The final look that I came up with today, uh, of course, I'll come back and review everything that I try out in my first impressions. I don't know if I'm a fan of this sponge off the bat. I feel like off the bat, I still really enjoy like my dose of colors, my Ofra sponge, this one, I'm just kind of like, I don't love the material of it. Uh, the Milani concealer, I really liked. I thought that was full coverage, but still blended well. So I really enjoyed that one. The Ofra duos, I thought were pretty. I think that you can still fit your brushes in those, um, the split pans, which is what I really wanted to test out today. Again, that bronzer is more shimmery and it is very pigmented. So I would say go in with a light hand and build it up from there. But I like shimmery bronzers. If you like matte bronzers, I wouldn't recommend that one, but, uh, and also the blush, uh, the blush and the highlight you can purchase separately also. Uh, that bronzer is a special limited edition bronzer in the duo. So I do like the blush and highlight. The Carly Bible palette, I'm excited to use it so much more. There's so many different colors that I think are so pretty from in there. So I'm really excited to use it more, but it feels like the same Anastasia formula that I am already familiar with familiar with and then the lip color I really like I like it with this look too I like that it's just a little bit deeper um, but I like the color Aspen a lot and again um, everything the Ofra holiday collection is available now on the website I am an affiliate with Ofra so my affiliate discount code is Samantha if you want to save 20% on your order but other than that that's where I'm going to wrap up today's video please let me know your thoughts down below again if you have any other questions that you'd like me to answer on blogging or social media or anything like that uh, please do leave them in the comments and I will try to get back to you uh, but other than that if you guys did enjoy this video you like to try to get ready with me please make sure to give this video a thumbs up that'll help me pop up in your subscription feed if you want to catch more of my videos and I would really appreciate that. Other than that, if you guys would like to consider subscribing before you go, that would be great, and I will catch you in my next video.